Royal Oak or Ferndale? Ferndale or Royal Oak? Which one of these Southeast Michigan cities is better to live in? That question is going to be answered right now. What's going on everyone? Andrew McManaman here with Living in Michigan and your all-time favorite Michigan realtor. And this video is a battle between Royal Oak, Michigan and Ferndale, Michigan. And I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison so you can decide which city you'll want to call home. Oh, and before I get too far, if you find some value in the content I put out, be sure to do your thing below so you never miss out on an upload. Let's first chat about location. In most comparison videos, you'd think it would be cities that are very distanced from one another, but in this scenario, these two cities are under 10 minutes away from each other. Being just 25 to 30 minutes from downtown Detroit, both these cities are primely located off Woodward Avenue with an easy commute from I-696 and I-75. The city of Ferndale was incorporated in 1927 and is reported to have over 20,000 people in its 3.88 square miles. On the other hand, the city of Royal Oak was incorporated in 1921 and has recently reported to have over 58,000 people in its 11.79 square miles. Next, what I want to touch on is the city feel. Even though these cities are just a few short miles away from each other, they still give off their own unique feel. I came across a forum that was trying to describe the downtown environment of nearby cities, and this is how it was put. Royal Oak is the new Birmingham. Ferndale is the new Royal Oak. Hazel Park is the new Ferndale. For those of you that live in these areas, do you agree with that statement? Why or why not? Throw your thoughts in the comments below. For those of you not familiar with those areas, I'll break down that statement to give you an idea of how truly different these cities are. Royal Oak is the new Birmingham. Well, if you don't know what Birmingham is like, I'll link a tour I did in the description showcasing the community below. Birmingham is known to be high dollar, always improving, and becoming this very tight city full of businesses. Lately, Royal Oak has taken notes from Birmingham's book and has been progressing at a very, very quick rate, transitioning from what was once as a small town to endless parking garages and high-rise condo complexes. So it's safe to say in comparison, Royal Oak is much more densely populated than Ferndale, but don't let that fool you. There's still endless local businesses, farmers markets, downtown events, parks, etc. But the reality is this is a small town with a big city heart. The city is becoming more modern by the day and less of what was once a small town and is more about the hustle and bustle. As far as Ferndale being Royal Oak, it's safe to call it Royal Oak's younger sibling as it progresses and grows at a slower rate compared to Royal Oak. Being as the city is not even four square miles, it's safe to say the city will maintain that small town feel since there's not a lot of room to build up like there is in Royal Oak. But since these cities are so close together, it's been pretty obvious that they've complemented each other greatly as they continue to grow over the years. Oftentimes, these are the cities that a lot of people spill into after watching sporting events in downtown Detroit, like the Detroit Red Wings, the Pistons, the Lions, and the Tigers. The walkability in both these cities is unlike any other, so based on that comparison alone, if you're looking for a quieter, smaller town feel, Ferndale will probably be a better option. If you're looking for a bigger city feel with a little hustle and bustle, Royal Oak might be your winner. The next topic I want to touch on is culture. Based on my last point about how these Southeast Michigan cities are progressing, it's safe to say there's some culture shifts. And I wouldn't say it's for the better or worse. These areas are becoming very popular, not just from out of towners, but out of staters as well. When it comes to the culture in Ferndale, you'll see more art, music, and DIY culture. Ferndale is such an open-minded community, so it doesn't surprise me that people are coming from out of state to get in on the cultural offerings. Royal Oak has a lot of events that draw people out of the area to the area, so traffic tends to be a little heavier, parking gets a little slimmer, and downtown gets a little more populated. Jumping to Royal Oak schools versus Ferndale schools. Royal Oak's top rankings involve Northwood Elementary School, Royal Oak Middle School, and Royal Oak High School. Ferndale has Ferndale Upper Elementary School, Ferndale Middle School, and Ferndale High School. Royal Oak High School has earned the College Success Award, which recognizes schools that do an exemplary job getting students to enroll and stick with college in the years of 2018 through 2021. Ferndale High School earned the award as well just in 2020. In a district school summary rating by greatschools.org, which uses metrics such as academics, equity, 
and the school environment compared to other public schools in the state. Royal Oak earned an above average school quality rating, whereas Ferndale earned a below average school quality rating. Next up, let's talk about things to do. It's no secret that Royal Oak and Ferndale have a ton of things to do when it comes to their downtown life. In Royal Oak, there's the Detroit Zoo for all your animal lovers out there, the Royal Oak Music Theater to get your fix on music and comedy specials, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle full of comedic talent, getting your drink on at Motor City Gas, which is home of some of the most unique whiskeys, and trying out your skateboarding skills at the Modern Skate and Surf. And of course, don't miss out on the huge Arts, Beats, and Eats festival that happens over Labor Day weekend, full of unique arts, great musical performance, and a whole lot of eats to say the least. In Ferndale, get your axe throwing game on at Detroit Axe, celebrate at the DIY Street Fair that runs from September 23rd to September 25th this year that involves art, musical entertainment, food trucks, and a whole lot of drinks from Michigan's own breweries, wineries, and distilleries. Get lost in the fifth wall escape room and get your virtual reality experience at VR Plus Zone. Now that I touched on things to do, it's time to tackle the restaurant scene. Starting off with Royal Oak, we have the one and only Ale Mary's Beer Hall, a place not to drink some of Michigan's best brews, but also to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Another spot is Pinky's Rooftop, which is an innovative bar located in downtown Royal Oak with a wonderful rooftop view and also offers unique drinks and food options. Be sure to make your reservation now so you aren't amateur like me thinking we could get a seat without one at prime time. And since we couldn't eat there, we found ourselves in Mesa Tacos and Tequila, which just so happens to be the two greatest things in the world, tacos and tequila. If you're a nacho fan like me, consider making a stop over there. I doubt you'll regret it. And last but not least, one of Royal Oak's hidden gems, no pun intended, Johnny's. Johnny's is a speakeasy atmosphere located right on Main Street that serves craft cocktails and unique dishes. You'll want to make a visit, I promise you. Jumping over to restaurants in Ferndale, starting this list off, we have Pops for Italian, which is known to have upscale Italian dishes and pizza. And if you love Italian like I do, you might want to head over there as soon as possible. Next, we have Public House. Public House is a unique eatery with creative burgers and other comfort foods in a cool, rustic setting. Next on the list, we have One-Eyed Betty's, which is a casual place with American food with music and pinball. It's not necessarily anything too special, but that's okay sometimes, especially in a city that is modernizing by the day. Next, we have the Asagi Bistro. I might have just butchered that name, I'm, I, I can almost guarantee it. This place is very rustic Mediterranean, but if you haven't tried their wood-fired oven pizzas, I'm afraid you haven't even lived yet, so you have to try them out. I have touched on things to do and restaurants to go in both cities, but I don't want to forget about the shopping situation. Since there's so many great places to name, I will link both of the city shopping situations in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. Alright, enough messing around here, let's talk about the economy cost of living and job opportunities in both of these cities. Taking a look at this table provided by bestplaces.net, we can see the overall cost of living index for both cities based on a 100 point national average. Ferndale sits at a 96.8 while Royal Oak is just over the national average at 101.6. Just so you don't have to do any math in your head, the third column breaks down the difference between each city based on the row. The two points on this chart that stick out drastically are housing and the median home cost. As you can see, Royal Oak is coming in at 106.9 and Ferndale is at 76.6, which is a huge difference, especially for two cities that are less than 10 minutes away from each other. These facts are a perfect example when people are saying all of Michigan is the same, but it goes to show a 10 minute difference is a big one in the mitten state. Jumping to median home costs, I'll hop over to the MLS to pull real life data and show you the charts. Taking a look at the average sale price in Ferndale, in green here, entire Michigan MLS, which is in blue, and Royal Oak, which is in yellow. You can see Royal Oak is quite a bit higher, which makes sense based on all the information I provided earlier about this progressing city. This graph shows the last three years and shows you the percentage increase based on the last 12 months. Royal Oak's average sale price is $334,214, which is a 12.1% increase from a year ago, 
while Ferndale's average sale price was $245,074, which was a 6.3% increase from a year ago. I know these charts and facts are super boring, but up until this point, you could have said these two cities are pretty identical, but now with this data laid out in front of you, you can understand that there's a reason Ferndale is on the top 10 list for best cities in Michigan for first time home buyers, just based on price alone. The last boring chart I want to show you is all about the month supply, meaning how long will the current housing inventory last before completely running out. As you can tell from the chart, even with the entire Michigan MLS, which is in blue, the trend is most definitely downward. There's just not a whole lot of inventory out there right now, and if there is, it's going pretty quickly. In Ferndale and Royal Oak, it would take just about a month before all current listings were gone, whereas the entire MLS is sitting at a month and a half. It shows that Ferndale and Royal Oak inventory is very slim and it has declined 20 to 30% over the last 12 months with the median days on market being 11 to 12 days for both cities. As far as current job market, Ferndale has a negative 10.58% in recent job growth, whereas their future job growth sits at 36.46%, which is over 3% higher than the United States overall. The unemployment rate is at 3.8%, which is 2.2% less than the United States. Royal Oak has also seen red in their recent job growth, coming in at negative 10.58% percent as well with a future job growth of 39.68 percent and an employment rate of 2.2 percent lastly i want to do a side-by-side -side comparison in terms of how these two cities rank according to niche.com the overall grade for ferndale is an a whereas the overall grade for royal oak is an a plus royal oak ranks an a minus in both public schools and housing whereas ferndale ranks a c minus in public schools and a b plus for housing the cost of living for Royal Oak is a B, whereas the cost of living for Ferndale is a B plus. And of course, both these cities scored an A plus for nightlife with their booming downtown areas. So which city is the best place to live? Well, it depends. If you're looking for a small town feel, less crowded, and cheaper real estate prices, Ferndale might be the place to go. If you're focused on schools, a growing economy with a denser population, then Royal Oak might just be the choice for you. Of course, I can't make the decision for you, but I can definitely lay it all out there for you to make the most educated decision you won't regret. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you got some value, please give it a big old thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and tap the little bell so you never miss out on an upload. I'll see everyone in the next one.